What's up, guys? It's the Dapper Dan Barbershop. I'm Jared Gilbert, and this is Z. Okay, Z. So, today you came with your girlfriend. You're looking for something different. Yep. She's okay with the beard, but you're looking to change everything. Just yeah. a, a whole change. What are we thinking today? Yes, uh, five months I've had the beard. It's been a good run, but I think it's time to get rid of it, start over. Clean, okay, so a full clean shave. Clean shaven. Okay, what are we thinking with the hair on the top? I know you did a uh, side part, you were telling me, and now a little bit of a grown out undercut. Yep, yeah, it's been five years, I've been basically doing the same thing. So between the undercut and getting a side part, so if you could just surprise me with something short on the sides, a little bit longer on the top, but okay. other than that, if you could just turn so me around. Skin, short, skin? skin? fade, yeah, it, mid okay. fade a little bit higher than the temples. Okay. Uh, and then the rest, whatever you want to do with the top, just yeah. I look. think what, what what's going to happen is you you definitely want to take down some of the length here, okay. but I got to work with the um, part that's still outgrown and it spikes up. So yep. I'm going to kind of chop in and we'll just wing it. Sounds good to me. Okay. And you don't want to look toward no. the mirror. Turn me around. Girlfriend can see what's going on, but just let me see at the end. Okay. Sounds good. Let's get started. Perfect. I'm going to be going all the way up straight up because I will be kind of looking for a little bit of a squareness to this fade. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm just going to also kind of buzz down the beard here while he finishes his heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, ha! Ah! <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> it's kind of like a Band-Aid. You got to just go for it, you know? That doesn't look bad just the way it is now. That actually looks Girlfriend? Stop His girlfriend is like, yeah, that's great. It didn't work out. I like it. We're not gonna leave it though. What I might do. Now, how would you be opposed to allowing me to leave just the mustache? I'm sure he would love that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Other girlfriend, how does it look? <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Sure. I'm not gonna lie. You could probably pull off a nice little mustache here. It's just little things like when you when you get up in the morning. I know you guys know with your beards, but when I was clean shaven, if I had some stubble and I was running late, I could just leave it and just have a right. Shadow. There's a lot more work yeah. behind. If you don't fix it, you look homeless right away. No, I know. Like my, my, like my beard, when I wash in the morning, I have to literally blow dry it and straighten it. Otherwise, it just poofs out. And I'm like, I can't leave like this. You look like you're about to do a phone call. Oh, excuse me. It's, it's me. It's Mario. <laughs> okay, so we're still using the same thing. We're switching over to a triple zero now. Um... I really don't have to go through all this, but you know, she's enjoying it and uh, he's kind of enjoying it, I guess. So we're gonna take it off slowly. I'm setting up my guideline with the triple zero right now. It's satisfying. <laughs> I heard something about um, you not bringing girls to the barber shop normally, and uh, this is an experience for you and yeah. your girlfriend. And yeah, so for my girlfriend, she's never been to a proper barber shop before. Oh, this always. is prop. This is proper. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So she always wanted to know what she was missing out on. She got to bring me to one of her many petty places. I realized I'm not missing out on anything there. Really? 
It's a good time. No, you can't no, no. lie. The experience is good, but I mean, she can do it for me at home, and it's the same thing. But right. it's just different hanging out with a bunch but of bunch of dudes doing dude things. Yeah. Is it everything you thought it would be? Yeah, it's really not that exciting. Yeah, I mean, really... you come to the shop, you watch uh, me uh, shave him down. James over here snoring. So. So I'm just buzzing through, um, taking more bulk down <laughs> while I still have the same blade out. You look younger. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, yes. You look a lot younger. You might actually be the prom king under there, you know what I'm saying? Jared, what, what, how was your prom? Um, I went, I went. Did you really? I went to my prom. So I'm just going to be grabbing my uh, shark fins. Um, <laughs> Just chopping off some of the weight. Emotionally, spiritually, everything. Um, going back and forth lately with my shears. Um, I really like these because of the affordability aspect and what you get for it. You really sound excited. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm going back from one side to the other because if you look, he still kind of has that like mohawk look from the undercut. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking off some of that length and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend it into what we have here and clean up all the sides. He still has that issue back here. So, I mean, this is probably about, about an inch. So I'm gonna be able to blend all this into the top. This is kind of gonna be an in-between haircut. He did show me a picture earlier. It was probably, um maybe maybe another inch longer than what i'm gonna leave but this will be a nice grow out and you will probably never know he had um you know an undercut it was a lot of bulk up top from the undercut uh we did take off most of the bulk on the bottom so i could kind of see the transformation while i'm doing it um and, you know, I don't know, sometimes I, I fade, you know, from bottom to top, sometimes I fade top to bottom. I just kind of want to get the whole top situated first and then fade into the top. All the women in the family are like, <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of like angling this in to kind of blend the top area into the side area here. You know, I am gonna be going for like a lot of texture up top and kind of more of like a faux hawky look. I don't want anything too clean. Cause it will grow out real nice. With the unevenness, eventually he will, depending on if, you know, he changes his hairstyle, might need to even that out a lot more, but for the grow out, I can blend in with the texture. Now I like to personally use a big comb here and kind of guide that around the curvature of his head. Um, you know, in this situation, I think that would be the best way to handle it. <laughs> so we're just gonna be switching over right now to uh, my wall with my three speedo guide. Um, I forgot you were still here. <laughs> you like looking around. And um, what I did was I started with the um, three, uh, excuse me, the one and a half. So I'm jumping up to the three just to kind of start to get that fade in a little tighter. Okay, so I'm just continuously fading around the head here. Now I'm with my two red Speedo guide. James is dropping things over there. Now I'm just gonna be jumping over to my Babliss uh, Pro, Babliss Pro. Thank you for disinfecting it. Yes, not a problem. We disinfect prior to this, but this was actually for more lubrication purposes. So now I'm gonna be jumping back to my uh, beautiful red wall clipper with my half clip. I'm gonna be opening that up a little and I'm kinda, as you can see on this side, creating another little fade line here. 
So I have my triple zero, now I have about a half clip up to my one and a half, and then we're gonna slowly blend that, and then I'm gonna bring up that fade with the skin. So right now, um, kind of bringing that a little tighter, we started with the one and a half, now I'm down to the one. And I'm just bringing that a little closer to his head before I really start the skin fade from the bottom. How you doing? Feeling lighter? So much lighter. <laughs> that one part at the back, when you get the cow lick, it feels so oh, good when that's yeah. done. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> so now I'm just going to be taking the same liner and just going upwards a little bit to bring that triple zero down a little tighter. There's still my guidelines in there, but they're tighter together. So when I do start to fade it, they should blend right together. I pretty much take it down in steps. So when I do profile it uh, for the skin, it doesn't pull on the hair. We're gonna be using the Babless Pro. I'm gonna actually be laying this flush against his head instead of my scraping technique just to blend in a little bit better all right so be jumping back in and we're going to be jumping in with the pro foil i'm pretty much going downwards from the temple now there's still heavy heaviness right here that i will blend out when i'm done with this I'm cutting in a little bit to probably about the bottom of the ear here because we're going to end up shaving all this off in a few minutes. So I go downwards first because if I go up it kind of like pulls on the hair a little so I go down and it like angle cuts it down and then I go back up. So there's a couple of different ways you can do things uh, but I mainly do it so it doesn't really irritate the customer instead of just speed aspect and everything. So now I'm going up. You're gonna still uh, oh, see yeah. the line here, my fade line, that I'm recreating uh, with my foil, but I will be easily blended out afterwards. Same thing, but now I'm going up and I'm stretching the skin to pull the hair out of the pore a little more. Bending down the ear to make sure I get back there. Now I'm going back to my uh, Bablis and I'm scraping up. Please let me know if that irritates you at all. No, it feels really good. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to be taking a warm towel here and just wiping down some of the area. Uh, skin is sensitive, obviously, because he hasn't shaved in a long time his, his head has been growing for months now his face has been growing yeah it's caps just, i used to fit into i don't fit into yeah anymore. it's just getting some of that hair out of my way before i finish this fade up now i'm not gonna lie i mean you know you said you like the beard but i gotta say you know he has like a very pretty face like it's not that not face. really the way i would have described <laughs> him but yes well, yes you yes. have very nice eyes and it takes away from it takes away from your face now because you're trapped. You're trapped. <laughs> you got Another. beautiful eyes. The rest of your face, kid. <laughs> yo, yo, what's going on? So I'm just going over his eyebrows real quick now. He's getting a full treatment. And I mean, you haven't seen yourself yet, but how do you feel? I feel so much lighter. Now, when was the last time you had like a skin fade? Skin fade. I don't know, probably four or five months, but okay. I've just had my hair really long on the top, so it yeah. kind of tracks. I can tell that you know what you're doing when my girlfriend is giving me looks that she hasn't given me in six months. Oh. Like, okay. Okay. It's getting better. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Even, even, even like when somebody gets out of the chair and they're just like, oh, dude. I yeah. love it. And they're like looking in the mirror and what product can I buy? Beard brand. You know, and, 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 you know, plain and simple, you feel really good about yourself. That makes me feel good about myself. That was great timing. <laughs> so I'm just buzzing this down a little further. 
Then we're gonna be doing a pre-shave and then the shave. Let me know if any of this is bothering you. I know you haven't had uh, any hair off of your face in a while. Trying to be sensitive here. Appreciate it. Feels great. So what I'm doing now, profoil, still taking it down. And then this is still part of my uh, appreciate process. Even though we're shaving, not physically a razor. Straight razor. How's that feeling though? So good. I mean, the shave does take practically the first layer of dead skin mm -hmm. off, you know? I mean, um, I do find, you know, <clears throat> the beard brand wash does get very deep into there. Um, I need to do it like every two days because um, I get dandruff a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you use any uh, treatments on your beard and your hair or are you more of a natural guy? Uh, mostly natural, but I did use uh, the beard brand beard oil and the sea salt spray, okay. which helped me just keep a very minimum hold because I don't yeah. really like that gel down look. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like about the product more and more. It's like it's not heavy. And it washes out super easy. Oh, yeah. yeah. I hate that residue feeling, so. I like using the clear shaving gel. I can see exactly what I'm doing. Very cost effective. Even at home, you know, this is a great gel for you to use now if you continue. Yeah. With the shaving. On my clean shaving journey. Yeah. I'm gonna have you turn toward the camera a little. Now I'm just pulling up on the skin and I'm just gonna go to town. Most of the, the weight actually came off with my uh, profile. So this glides right through. But like I said before, um, since I'm stretching the skin and I wasn't really stretching the skin that much, um, the hair is coming out of the pore right now and I could get a tighter shave. Now I'm putting my thumb or finger over the eye area um, right here just in case I slip or something I hit myself instead of the client which is probably not good either but I'd rather do that to me than him now some of the barbers out there know about the different directions that you're supposed to shave with and everything um, I tend to do that but then I go against the grain as well while I'm doing that so you know I'll, I'll do the 14 point but then I'll go back while I'm doing it okay so this is the um Lollywax. I mean, uh, my buddy over here uh, spoke about his nose hair situation. Not a big situation, but this is just going to clean that up a little bit for you. So what I'm doing is I'm just heating it up with the hair dryer. I like these because they're not that invasive. We spoke about um, his uh, real waxing um, chest situation. Girlfriend decided to shave my chest. I'm sure this will be nothing. Right, right, right. All right, here we go. I don't know. Righty, lefty. Wasn't that bad? No, that was nothing. Not bad, right? No. Yeah, it's just a little bit of the outside rim oh, that you well. want to clean off. Does what you need it to do. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to pick you up clean you off you said you use some of the sea salt sprays yep. uh, what is your sea salt spray of choice or would you like to try something different tonight? yeah I'm usually using the woodsy one so if you have another one I'll try okay. one of those uh, we're gonna be using the old money tonight just gonna be spraying that in there for a little texture a little different scent than you're probably used to yep just gonna be using my utility bomb. I like to use both. Get you a barber that can do both. Get you one that can do both, bro. All right. You ready for the uh, reveal here? Yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot lighter. Hopefully, a lot better too.
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you look like a different person. Dude. Oh my god, I look different. You look different. like a different person. How does it feel though? It looks amazing and it feels good. Okay, I mean, um, we did kind of speak about how I wanted to kind of like full hawk it. Yep. You could play around with that if you want. I mean, I kind of just want to mess it and kick it over a little and then kick this up. I mean, whatever you want to do. Yeah, no, that Low works. Low maintenance, uh, smooth, irritation will go away in a little bit. Yep. And uh, what is uh, what does the girlfriend think? Oh my God, you look like a completely different person. <laughs> uh, you still taking them home, or uh, do we have to call them a taxi? I'll take you home. I'll take you. Sounds home. good. Thank you guys. Beard brand, love you. What's up? It's Jared from the Dapper Den Barbershop in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and today we have Lorenzo. So Lorenzo, what are we planning on doing today? Knock down the winter growth, more of a spring timeline, clean up the beard, sides, a little off the top. Okay, so we're gonna do like a two and blend it in and take some length down. All right, sounds good to me. So I'm just gonna disinfect my tools here. I'm gonna start off with my two clip, pretty much take down the lower part of his hair. I'm gonna run through the bottom of his hair to create my fade line. And then we're gonna chop down the top a little and blend everything all together. He likes length, but he likes it cropped on the bottom. So now I'm just gonna take the eight clip, it's the biggest clip we got here, and just take a little bulk out, and then I'm gonna go back in with the shears and all that. This is gonna leave about an inch around the side. That's usually what he likes to work with. Now in this case, I'm leaving a lot of the length around the crown. You're not gonna chop it off at a six this time? No. <laughs> we got an eight. <laughs> now in this situation, I like to do his hair with a lot of texture. So I'm not gonna sit here and layer and do all that stuff. I'm gonna texturize the top like crazy. I'm literally gonna chop into it. Let's see where we're going. Now this is gonna take a lot of that chunk off again too. I'm just running through with this. And like I said, it's not gonna be even. It's gonna be very texturized. We're just taking off a lot of this weight still. Okay, so I took some of the bulk out. I'm still gonna chop the top down. Right now I'm gonna use the Atori Hanzo, and we're just pretty much gonna blend the two into what I got up here, which would be kind of like the eight, which would be about an inch. He doesn't like it too drastic. So, I'm just gonna continue to blend this. I just blended that side a little bit. I'm gonna blend this side. What I wanna do is I'm doing this quickly because I've done it. This is more my technique. You might have your own. I'm still kind of curving the comb where it's flat against his head. And I'm kind of seeing off over here. And then I'm going up a little bit into the top line there. That's why it looks like I'm doing it so quick because I am. I'm still gonna work this out. Then I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna do more of like, like a clipper over comb type of situation on the sides here. This is just another one of my forms to take the bulk out. So 
so now I'm using the Babliss uh, liner here and I'm doing more of a clipper over comb to keep my blending going. Now you could probably do this a lot of other ways. I got multiple ways of doing it. This is how I'm comfortable with it. Doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna spin them around. But James wants to come this way so you can see with the lighting better now. Thank you. We're just gonna continue to go up. I'm still flush against here with my two. I'm making sure that down here there's no hair sticking out and I'm going with the curvature of his head to slowly blend up. Now I'm just gonna do a couple of different things to clean up and help me with the cut. I'm gonna go around the ears and get rid of some excess hair that I don't need. Now, you hear how it got quieter because that's not just a disinfectant, it's also a lubricant. So over time, you gotta continue to lubricate. Oh, they're gonna burn Dude, that's stupid. <laughs> okay, so now back to the wall seniors, cordless. No dinging now, like the last video is no <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now I'm just gonna taper out the bottom again because it was a little blotchy. So I'm just hitting that. And then I'm gonna go back over that later with my blade. Now that we're back to the top area, I'm just playing around. I like to go forward to try to find the natural part and see how things go. If it's going in one direction, I work with that. I don't try to go against it. This way, at the end of the haircut, everything will fall nicely. See how all that's falling now? Now, like I said, I'm not layering, I'm texturizing. So, the reason why I'm going up and I'm kind of going straight up with the hair like this, I'm not layering, like I said. I want it to be choppy, I want it to be texturized. So I'm just following through somewhat like I would normally, but we're just chopping at it. And I'm trying to see how everything is falling after I'm doing it, if it falls nicely on his head. Okay, so if James wants, James wants to step <laughs> over here, I forgot what his name is. I'm gonna take a look from a distance. It's a nice blend, but I see a couple of little spots I wanna play around with and massage out. So I'm gonna take my wall senior again with my two clip and just play around with what I need to. Because obviously we started with the two, so we'll end up with the two. And I like to step back as well and see what the cut looks like from a distance, because sometimes it does crazy things that you won't see when you're up close. Okay, so there's a lot of waviness throughout his hair. Sometimes what people are doing, they're taking the brushes and the blow dryer to do it. This is a new tool that James put me on to that um, pretty much what this does is it, it will straight, straighten the hair um, with the temperature as well. I don't wanna bring it too high. I'm gonna leave it at like 340 because we don't wanna do any damage to the hair or the face. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna straighten the beard out with this heated brush. And you're gonna see it already automatically started to uh, straighten out. This is a flatter surface. There was somebody on YouTube talking about this, that if you actually come down here, you're, you're, you're going with the curvature of the chin, which is not what you wanna do. You wanna make more of a flatter surface by maybe going to the side and going to the side and going back down and coming out. And this will straighten the hairs out for me where when I do my bottom line, because he wants to take some off, I'll be able to get a straight line. Okay, so now that that straightened the beard out, it shows how much length is really here. Now, we spoke before that you wanted to take it down to like more of a summer feel. How short do you think that your chin being here and the length being down here, how short do you think you want to take off? I mean, are we going like a good inch? 
I split the difference. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna split the difference, and then you want to come straight down on the sides, or do you want to curve it a little bit? I follow whatever line. Okay, I, I think I would like it straight down, and then kind of curve it a little bit, and then we're gonna also touch up the mustache area, right? Correct. Okay. Perfect. So now I'm combing it down. We already uh, pretty much you know straightened it out. Show the length. Now that's gonna help me when I want to cut it down and square it off on the bottom. So I'm just gonna go in now, get my first couple of cuts in. Now he did want to take off substantial length, but still leave a nice shape. <laughs> just hit your head on the camera. As I knocked myself out <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> Now, with it being so straight, it's a lot easier to work with than combing and combing and combing and combing. You still want to comb because there's always going to be that little bit that you want to work with. But, I mean, if the camera could see, I don't know. It, it's real clean in there. And I still got a little more to go. This is going to be a lot easier for him when he puts the product in to just lay everything flat and there's not going to be too much sticking out once i finish shaping this now i'm going to go back with my liner after this i'm taking bulk out as i like to do See how straight that is getting. Now it might poof up a little bit after this when he goes home and he washes, but it's still gonna be a lot easier for him to work with and it has a nice clean line to it. Now there's different products um, out there that work for different situations. I recommend you go on uh, Beard Brand's website to check out what product works best for your situation. So when we were going back through again, I noticed that I didn't like the way something looked. James didn't like the way something looked. So the reason why we're going back in is because he has a cowlick in this area and he has a cowlick in that area. So the hair is growing up, it's coming down. You gotta really finesse these areas. See right there. Now I'm just gonna go with the grain a little bit. I'm not flush on his head. I'm kind of gliding lightly with the back end and kind of curving out just to get all these little hairs to do what I want it to do. Now he did want to take some length off of his mustache because it's huge. So we're gonna go back in with that in a minute. Right now I'm just laying and still shaping. Now we're gonna tackle the mustache. I'm gonna use a couple of different techniques. I'm gonna use the clipper, uh, clipper over comb. I'm gonna go back in with scissors. Whatever I need to do to get this out of his way. He wants to leave the top area natural, but we wanna expose a little bit of the lip because he doesn't like it in his mouth when he's eating his food. He wants his food in his mouth. Now people do different things. I like to curve this around and kind of blend it into this side area here. Now, we were talking about this before. He still has a lot of length there. He doesn't want to keep. We disagree. But at least now, even with what I just did there, if he wanted to keep the length, this is all out of his mouth. I'm using the comb at different angles to catch what I want. Okay, so I just took the towel out of the microwave. We're gonna be using a towel on Lorenzo today. I like the criticism in the last couple of videos about maybe, you know, covering up more because it was going, the hair was going down the customer's shirt. It's always a good thing to take uh, criticism and learn from it. Yeah, so we're using a gel. 
And I like the gel because it's clear. I can see what I'm doing. I mentioned that in other videos. I'm gonna start off with the neckline and then we'll go up to the top. Now I'm noticing that, you know, the hair is growing upwards. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to step around, pull up, and I'm going with the grain. Now it's never gonna be 100% smooth unless you go against the grain, but a lot of irritation comes from that. Now I'm noticing he has that callus, so now it's going down. This side is going back up. Stretching the skin as I'm doing this. Now we're gonna tackle the top area. Stretching the skin here, covering his eye so it doesn't poke it out. So right now, I'm getting my shape. I'm gonna clean this up, I'm gonna do the other side, and then I will go over it with a dry shave to make sure that my line is straight. Now, sometimes people line up the top and then they do the razor. I don't know, nine times out of 10, I like to just not line up the top and just do it strictly with the razor. I feel it comes out better. Okay, so now we're doing a dry shave because like me and James were just discussing earlier, things are crooked. People see other things that other people don't see. I like to go back in and triple check whatever I have to do to make sure it's perfect. So now we're gonna be using the Beard brand. This is the uh, Temple Smoke. This is a styling balm. Uh, this will actually help with the hair, the little stragglers. So we're gonna put some of that on. I'm rubbing it into my palm, heating it up, massaging it into Lorenzo's hair. So now we're gonna be using some pomade to style his hair. A little dab, warm it up as well. Now, this is all falling like I wanted it to. He doesn't have to put too much thought into it. So, how we looking, Lorenzo? Excellent. Thank you again from the Dapper Den Barbershop. This is Jared Gilbert of the Dapper Den in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and today we have Wayne Adesi. All right, Wayne, so what are we thinking today with your hair? Well, you know, I'd like to get a nice clean cut. You know, it has a tendency to grow heavy in the back, so I want you to just clean it up all around, nice and even like you have done in the past. And uh, So, mohawk on the top. Mohawk on the mohawk. top. And I want a tattoo over here, too. Yeah, I got that hand. All right. All right. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the clippers. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a clip on the sides. I'm going to do probably about a five on the sides. And then do a light little taper. And just shear the top a little bit. There's not, you know, a whole lot going on. <laughs> no offense, Thank Wayne. <laughs> But we're gonna clean up those sides nice, you know? Right. 
Wayne is also a fellow business owner in Ridgefield where we have the barber shop. He just, uh, we just celebrated our three year anniversary and Wayne is on his 70th. 70th. Family business, three generations. Right. Right downtown in Main Street. Great jeweler. And a great neighbor. Jerry. Yes. So as you see, I'm just starting from the bottom up to the crown area with the five. He probably doesn't want to see scalp. So we're going to keep it at this level. And then what I'm going to do is a light little taper around the bottom. Scissor down the top a little bit. And line it up. Now we're just going all the way around. It would be like a regular fade where we're starting a uh, top fade line. But there really is no top fade line. We're just going with the shape of his head in the back here and on the sides. And that will automatically fade in. So it's the same techniques as a, uh, you know, thicker hair. Okay, so now that I've gone around all the way with my five, I'm just gonna make sure I got these areas that I need to get. I'm actually gonna take my two clip now. So I'm gonna be taking my magic clip with the two. And I see the way the hair is splitting back here. That's the way Wayne's hair grows. It's got a calic here, a calic here, and it kind of splits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take down all this to a two and give it a nice two taper and then shear into that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the sideburns. So when he has that grow out, it's, it's not gonna poof out and hang over, you know? So he'll have a nice grow out and then, you know, in between if he wanted to, he could come in and we could clean up the neckline. You know, a lot of people don't talk about, you know, the in-between stages. Some people just get a haircut and um, wait a couple of months. I know you're about every month or well, something like that. Six weeks I mean, you're a busy man, yeah, so. Right. Um, and you're busy man. Yeah, it's hard to get in now. Yeah, that's right. So, um, what, what, what I'm saying is sometimes we do have clients that come in uh, in between. James spoke about how long do you wait in between haircuts. Um, every client is different. Sometimes if you are um, a businessman where you're seeing your clients all the time, I recommend that you come to your local barber shop, the Dapper Den, and you get a cleanup which would just be around the neck and the ears and stuff like that. So it doesn't grow over and hang over your neck. I know when you wear a collared shirt, it's growing all down your back. You don't want to do that, you know? So it's not a full haircut. It's just a cut in between. So that might be something good for, you know, people to look into. I mean, as well, if he's not, he's not a bearded person, um, but if he was bearded, you know, to continuously clean up around the ears and blend into the beard instead of, if you want to come over here, see how the hairs are all hanging out over? And it's all crazy. This would be clean. Even if I didn't cut his hair and I went and I cleaned the sideburn and I went around and I cleaned the back, he would feel like a million bucks and he would look like a million bucks. So that's a nice little way to keep your hair in between haircuts clean. You know, a lot of people, they have long hair and uh they don't maintain it they don't they think that it's just long i don't want to do anything right you know if you if you do a nice shape up especially if you have long hair and a beard and you keep yeah. the lines clean it's always it's about a, the lines. it's a great idea yeah <clears throat> so now i got my three clip and i'm just going to be pretty much grazing around the bottom here because if i remember correctly i did the five and the two taper so what this is gonna do is it's just gonna cut all those little hairs. So when I scissor through real quick, nothing's gonna be overhanging. So what I think I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna line it up. We're gonna clean off his neck and we're gonna blow all the hair off and then we're gonna scissor. While you're doing this, you just wanna go around, make sure if you see anything on the ears, in the ears, you're taking care of that because those are the 
pain in the butt spots that all of our partners and everything notices first. That's another thing. Manscaping. Yeah. Doesn't have to necessarily be crazy areas. The ears, the neck, you know, um, the eyebrows sometimes grow out of hand. You know, I'm not saying you need pencil thin eyebrows, you just might need a little cleaning. And all these touches make you feel like a million bucks. Yes, they do. Now, you know, we've been doing a lot of different videos lately. Um, Wayne's watched a couple. They're, they're, you know, different drastic beard um, videos where the guys come in and they got long beards and we transform everything. But you know what? There's a lot of customers out there like you Just like me. that don't have a beard, right. but their products are still perfect for the hair. The, the positive feature with their products is that everything that's in the product itself is listed on their website. Um, so if you have any allergic reactions to certain things, it also tells you um, what each ingredient does for your hair. The positive feature about this is that it's not just a product, it's also like a vitamin for your hair to keep your hair healthy. <clears throat> I can use that. For sure. <laughs> I think we all can use that. It's Vitamins funny. or it's healthy funny. hair? My hair seems like uh, it's gotten whiter. Uh, no, I don't know if you've noticed know. since I'm back from Mexico, uh, yeah. my beard just went full on white. Is that right? I don't know if that's stress from the family or... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. You know? There you go. So stress does... What causes white hair? Do we know that? Good question. Um, yeah, I... So, might have to Google that one. We'll have to find that one. Pause, and okay. we'll get back to you on that. Lack of pigment. Lack of pigment? Hair pigment. Hair pigment. Hair there pigment. you go. Okay. George is here again. I, I don't know if you noticed the last video George was in. He's never here. He's <laughs> now he's in every video. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah. But in my other job, I'm a police officer. He's also a police so officer. So, and my <laughs> truant officer, or what? What, what is it? Not the truant officer. Probation. 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 Yes. <laughs> he's you my probation that. officer. Right. We are in good hands right here. Yeah. We yeah. usually have a closed yeah. set, yeah. but um, yeah. we had such and great clientele that we can continue doing it. Um, and talk about the product and whatnot. And you know what? Um, closed sets have pros and cons, but you know what? I, yeah. I kind of like the reality of this. Yeah, exactly. We're really talking about That's the right. product. We're talking about the barbershop. We're talking about life. It's not just. You How about know, the personality, though? Yeah, yeah. Jared, it's the personality. I, it's, I did not tell you to speak yet, Wayne. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> tough crowd. It's tough. <laughs> The personality yeah, it's all about. Both. The product is the product, okay, it's a great product, but the personality behind it is what makes the difference. Right, you know? right. And uh, sitting in this chair, it's a great relaxing environment. Love it. You know? Thank Love you. being here with you guys, and that's a big part of it, too. So yeah. I'm not going crazy over here. I'm just cleaning off these little extra hairs that he's got just to clean it up. Now, what I'm going to do... I'm gonna have you put your drink sure, right here. You got it. And I'm gonna blow the hair off so okay. it's ahead, nice bro. and clean before we go to the <clears throat> next step. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really quickly profile around just so it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go back over all this with um, my and razor I'll, as well. I'll, I'll be right yeah, go for it. I'm just gonna graze across the ears here. Make sure I get all those little ear hairs that we were talking about. So I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. Cleaning up a little. I, I like to, everybody does it differently. You know, I mean, you've probably been to barbers that do things totally different. I mean, I'm not the barber. This is the full service. Yeah, actually a funny story behind this. Wayne's family actually owns the building where we have the barbershop and they've owned uh, real estate in town for a long time so I don't know did you the, the former any of the former barbers did you ever come to their barbershops oh, sure. yeah. Sure, yeah so I mean yeah. every I mean I'm probably I think I'm like I the fifth say, or sixth fourth generation maybe no I think more if I'm not mistaken as far as what's here oh, at least yeah four. we got uh, a oh man we got Armando we got Otto we got Bill we got Mariana we got uh 
Uh, I forgot the other lady. Five. So maybe six? Six? Okay. Six? Seven? Six. Something like that? Yeah. So they definitely cut differently than me. Yeah. Right. You know? So everybody, like I'm saying, everybody has their own techniques. Um, you know, as long as the client is happy, I mean, right. this is not really something he wants to do by himself. I mean, I've seen people... Uh, you know, just buzz the hair when they're at a certain level, at, at an even level. Listen, there is a difference between you doing it in your bathroom and a professional doing it. You know, it's going to have a definite better grow out. Right now, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be wetting it a little bit. And that grow out that I'm talking about is, it's not just a clipper. I'm going to be hitting it real quick with the shears. It's going to be taking those dead ends off and it's also going to be texturizing it. The taper that I did back here is a very light blend, okay? We keep going back and forth uh, with all the people on the internet, what a fade is, what a blend is, this and that. Anything from one level to another, I call a fade, okay? You can, uh, you know, let me know. Let me know what, what makes the difference between a fade to you a uh, high fade, a low fade, I understand, but what is a fade? What numbers, what length, you know? Let's hear some uh, comments about that. This will also even out all those little calic areas that we were talking about before. Now he has a lot of salt and pepper right here in this area. So in other videos, we spoke about this. Sometimes it plays tricks, you know. Um, I personally think this is falling fantastically. Hopefully the camera, TJ, this camera is good enough where it will actually show the quality of the fall of the hair there and the blend. Um, you know, that spikage that we have over here on the side is gonna disappear because we're gonna be texturizing this. And that's also gonna help grow out like we were talking about. The fantastic thing about hair is it's a, an affordable, a real affordable way to feel better about yourself, to look better, you know? And the product as well, the product comes into play, you know? I mean, you could just walk out of the house, have a great haircut, but hair is all over the place, you know? I noticed on the top of my head, as it gets longer, it just, it's constantly up in the air. It's frizzy, My yes. daughter's always like matting it down at me, so. Right, so this, this will this help it. Here will help keep it in place. St substantially, yeah. and it'll bring the proper nutrients back into it as well. So what do you do, just keep taking that down? Top. Well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm, I'm pretty much cutting. We, well, it. yeah, you got you got about that, <laughs> say about three inches, a something like that. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm grazing through, cutting about a quarter of an inch off evenly around. Okay. And then we're just going to keep that and that feathers into this. You really don't want to take. Sometimes people do. Sometimes people will ball this out. Yeah, right. I don't know if I personally like that look. Right, right, right. Um, you know, sometimes people will go down to a lower level here, so it kind of just spikes up. It, it's preference, right. you know, it is preference. What do you think? Um, I, I think it's good to go. Okay. Um, with it being light and darker on the sides, it gives it a nice contrast. Okay. You pull it off very well. We've done another video where uh, the gentleman, he was younger and he wanted to see before it really went okay. how it would look. Um, that video came out fantastic. You know, a lot of people were interested so in that. So shaved it off? Is that what you're saying? We, we ended up shaving it off. He had a beard, great beard lineup and okay. everything. Um, I personally like the look of uh, a, a person with the contrast. So like myself, when I shave and I have a heavy beard, right. you're the opposite. Um, I, think, I think this is fine. I mean, if you're okay with the card you're dealt, yeah, you yeah. play the hand that you're dealt, it right, is right, what it is. Right. I would love to have a little something to kick over like you got, right, right, right. you know? Yeah. Everybody's on different levels. Sure. Uh, I work with what I have and, and I know when I cut hair, I kind of try to do that for the customer too. Yeah. I work with what they have. If they have yeah. a calic in a I certain like, area. I like what you did because you can see all the whiteness all around. Right. So as much as there is a little bit on top and there's right. more on the sides, it's still kind of it, there, even. There's contrast. I still feel like I have hair all around. Right, there is contrast, but it's it's more leveled and right. even around now. I mean, now it's interesting. Why are the eyebrows black? Who has an answer for that? These are questions <laughs> that uh, we might need to uh, check back with you That's on. Right.
So I'm just gonna be grazing over this area here with my comb. Obviously, he doesn't want craziness over the, the eyebrows, but there's a couple of hairs that stick out. And I personally think it, it, it makes the whole difference of the haircut when you do the nose hairs, when you do the eyebrow hairs, when you get rid of all these little areas. I don't want to call it an imperfection. It's not an imperfection. It's life, it's the way things grow. It's a beauty mark. But uh, yeah, you know, maintenance is maintenance. I'm just gonna clean off all these little hairs back here one more time. I'm gonna hit that area with a razor. Then we're gonna clean off his neck and we're gonna be using the product. Now I like to go, you know, nice inch underneath the collar. I mean, some people, they just clean up a little bit and they leave the hair. That drives me nuts. I like it to be all the way down so none of these hairs are ruining what we just did. We're trying to have a clean, nice area. If you got one or two little, you know, sprouting out, I don't like that look. A little drying this one more time. I'm just lightly rubbing a little shaving gel around, uh, around, around, rain. hello, let's yeah. do that again. Lightly rubbing shaving gel around Wayne's neckline. Got it. And I'm just gonna be cleaning up what I just did with my liner, just to give it that real clean line. Okay, so. We're going to be using four vices today. Nice smell. Oh, nice, yeah. yeah. And we're not going to be using a lot of product. There, there doesn't really have to be that much use of this product. I'm warming it up in my hands. I'm getting the top area where Wayne was talking about his daughter is always ending up, you know, pushing down. Right. And I'm just following his head the way the hair naturally ladies. Very nice. It, Love the smell of the product Yeah, too. it's That's not, great. it's very mm -hmm. natural yeah. feeling. So, I mean, right now, it's clean. Yep. As the camera could see, everything is falling in place. Now it's gonna pay, it's gonna play tricks on you right here um, because of the, the salt and pepper, but that's nice. This all falls into place, it would be a great grow out. Good. Okay? Perfect. Feel like a million bucks. Okay. Dapper Dent, Richfield, Connecticut. What's up? It's Jared Gilbert of the Dapper Den, Ridgefield, Connecticut, and today we have Corey. So what are we <laughs> thinking about doing today, Corey? Uh, we're going to do the normal thing that you usually do, where we take in the sides, we buzz that, and then not really a fade, but we're going to blend that up to the top, leave enough on the top that you can kind of play around with it, not too long, but I don't want to see scalp anywhere. So and then we blend down to the, the back, same thing, More of a short. blend than a fade. Going short, though, in the back. Perfect. Same thing. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay, right, I'm cool. not going to lie. Why didn't somebody tell me I'm, like, bald right now? What? Oh, I should have done my hair, dude. All right, so today we're going to start out... We're also dumb. ...by disinfecting <laughs> the clipper. Make sure you get all that in there. All right. Let it sit for about 10 minutes like James and uh, me normally do. And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to start off with a 7 clip on the sides. Just to tame this so I could scissor into it. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do like a, like a 2 taper on the bottom and I'm going to scissor into the sides and texturize and take some length off the top and just texturize the top. I, I, I like to texturize. I don't like that straight cut. Now everybody's different. 
Everybody has their own techniques. We've said this before. Um, I like to somewhat get the bulk off so it doesn't really, you know, confuse me while I'm doing something. So I'm pretty much taking down half of the sides right now just so I could work with it a little better. Now, like I said, I'm going to be somewhat doing a two around the sideburns in the neck area. So if you want to take a look, what I'm going to be doing is tapering a little bit of the bottom here. This is my number two speedo guide. My magic clip. Now, please let me know if I'm irritating you. Not personally, but uh, hair-wise. We do know each other, so don't be alarmed if we joke around a little. Now I'm using the wall senior. Same clip. I'm lightly blending this. I'm not going to go crazy because I'm going to pretty much scissor over comb the whole side. Doing just a light little taper on this area. Corey's been coming to us for a while now. And this is probably his go-to haircut if you want to call it a go-to. Now we're going to get back into this. But I just want to, he wants to shave off all the beard and everything. So what we're going to do is we're just going to square up the sideburn. I'm going to lightly start that shave right there just so the hair is out of my way. And then it won't be a concern until later. Now, like I said in the past, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going back in after the haircut to fix that and take that off. Now, if you take a look over here, it's very blonde light at the bottom. He's got this W or the M or whatever it is. So what I'm doing is I'm going to find the darkest area here. Even though there's light points, I don't want to take those all the way up to there because that would look crazy. So usually it's about an inch off the collar. Um, I'm going to hit it right about here. So I'm just getting rid of that area there. We're gonna go back in, like I said, in about a minute. We're gonna blow this off. I like to keep it a little clean, the area where I'm working. Spray it with some water, soak it down. Okay, so we wet it down. I'm gonna take off the length on the top a little bit. These are my new Hattori Hanzo uh, seven inch, James? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Nice and big, gets a lot done in one cut. We're just gonna turn him around. Now, as I said before, I pretty much had lightly tapered with a two clip. So now I'm gonna have him look down a little bit and I'm just gonna slightly scissor over comb here, okay? With my shear. Puts the texture back in and takes that line nicely out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way up to the top, okay, and that's going to texturize all the sides so it's not clean lines, it's just nice and textured. And then the top, we're going to use a bigger Hattori Hanzo that will do the same thing. But instead of point cutting, I could do it with like two or three strokes. Now, I don't know why I'm really bending down, I would recommend using the chair <laughs> to bring it more up to your height so you don't bend down. Technology. One good thing about being a barber, you get to talk to people, you get to help people. Sometimes they'll hook you up. He used to work at a lovely liquor store in town and uh, taught me a lot about bourbon, which is very cool to me. And, uh, yeah, I'm doing enough. Got me a lot of the, uh, oh, yeah, the, the ceiling. whole ceilings. That, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So those were the old wine boxes that we broke down. What's that? A little more agua for you. H2O. H2O. <laughs> now I'm going to take my three clip, get back into this area here with a taper. 
I don't really want it too choppy down here. I want that nicely blended. I'm going from open to close, just being a to go back to my two clip. I see a little darkness in this area. I could go back over it with the shears, but I'd rather just tape this out with the clipper. It will come out a lot cleaner. Now, that W that we were talking about a few minutes ago, I'm going to use the one clip all the way open just to lighten up that area a little. The middle part here, because the lighter I go, the more it's going to look blended. Because there won't be that much contrast between that W. Now I'm playing around with this just to see what works the best lengthwise. I keep going down a little bit. You know, if I really got to get in there with the one, then I'll get in there with the one. He has trust in me. Sometimes you have to just listen to the barber because you can't see behind your head. Um, and the barber might, A, know what they're doing where you wouldn't. Um, so... This is where the art comes into play too, because you're kind of working with all this. I'm just going back over what I did. I know some people are like, if you did it right the first time, you wouldn't have to go back over it. I like to go over and touch up my work. It is about time and money, but it's also about being happy with your product when it leaves. Fabulous Pro. Just getting in here a little bit. I think it's tickling my customer. No. It's called a what? No, not yet. Babless Pro? This is a babbling not pro. <laughs> Welcome to the Dapper Den. Alright, now I took off uh, my desired length before. I'm going to go back in with my texturizing shears. These are the Hattori Hanzos that I almost cut my finger off. You might want to be careful when you yeah, use them. Um, Hotori Hanzos that I'm talking about right now are very wide tooth. Uh, they're, they're angle cuts. It's it's literally like going back in. And James has spoke about this and doing point cutting without doing point cutting. Saves time. Some people like it. I have my own ways of doing things. Some people disagree with the way I cut. My clients don't. <laughs> so pretty much what I'm doing with this is I'm... I'm literally grazing right through it and giving it nice point text, point cut texture. There you go. That's a big one. Yeah, it was kind of hard to get out. What? So just like I did before, I'm going back into my tape here. Yeah taper in the front here. <laughs> I did the two, I'm doing a three. I'm gonna hit the corner with a four here. So this, this haircut, I'm kind of like just going with the flow and working with the curvature of his head. Um, kind of not really the real fade blend square off. I'm, I'm going more of like a blowout taper idea with a messy top. Uh, so you're gonna have a little bit of bubble here, a little bit of weight on the sides, but it would be nice and clean around the bottom. <laughs> so now we're gonna go into the beard. I'm just gonna take it off uh, with the Babyliss Pro Liner first. Now, just like his neck in the back here, uh, the front irritation, I'm gonna go as light as I can to get this off. And then I'm going to use the pro foil uh, just so it's not as irritated as a razor. So this doesn't really have to be clean clean. You just want to take uh, some of the length off to help the pro foil from like grabbing. If the hair is too long when you use the pro foil, it won't really get in there. And then if it, there's a lot of like peach fuzz, 
that's really hard to go through as well. <laughs> yes, I, I said. I said. I got a zinger right now, so I can say it. <laughs> Chris, dude, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning, dude. That is a crazy. Now, before I get back over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it off. The powder will help the hair off the face if it's sticky. I'm just gonna put some cold air on him. No special reason, it's a little hot. It's really hot. That's... Yeah, he's got a little sweat, so we're gonna cool that down. <clears throat> now, this is a new blade actually that I put on this morning yeah, because I noticed that. The amount of times that I use it, my blade goes dull really quick, and it's not really going to cut as good as it would, and you're going to have to go over it numerous times, you're going to irritate and whatnot. This, I'm going to do a downward stroke with this first, and I'm stretching on the skin as well to get those hard to reach areas. Now, this is really good because if you come around this way, it gets really smooth on his hair texture here, and it doesn't really irritate. You know, you could go back in, instead of sitting there rubbing 20 times with the liner, and then go back over with the profile if there's some, you know, hard to get longer stragglers. Doing the same thing on the other side. Don't be scared, I'm still here. That's what I'm scared of. <laughs> go all the way up, stretch. See how it, when he stretches, it's a little easier to get to this surface area down here. I'm stretching, so hopefully it's not as irritating as it would be if it didn't stretch. I see there's some long stragglers down there. Now that he's stretching, I'm just gonna pull on the skin. I'm gonna lightly go over that so I can go back with the profile and get all those little guys. Sometimes the hair, depending on the texture, lays flat against the skin. You really gotta get in there and massage them out. Um, everybody's hair texture is different. Everybody's hair grows in different directions. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's a little redness, but it's not as crazy as if you did it a different way. Um, you still are scraping across his face with a blade, but it's not as irritating as any other way that we could do this. So we just uh, spoke about cleaning up the eyebrows here a little. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to just, you know, find the comb that I'm comfortable with. And I see this is, this is probably about one and a half clip to a two clip maybe and I just kind of graze across the eyebrow so now we just have a hot towel that we're just going to go through lightly what we just irritated with some aftershave It's also helping clean out the pores. I mean, it's supposed to be cold afterwards, but a customer nine times out of 10 doesn't like cold towel afterwards. So unless I'm doing a full shave, I pretty much go with a nice warm towel. Today we're gonna to be using the uh, Four Vices Styling Balm. This is pretty much what he uses all the time. Yeah, I have the spray, and I have the spray and the balm. Right. I'm just gonna warm that up a little. Throw a little in there. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. How are we feeling today? I like it. Looks good. Just messed up everything I did. <laughs> but you style it the way you want to style it, as long as you're happy. Yeah, right. Thank you.
I'm Jared Gilbert of the Dapper Den in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and today we have Mike. Mike, what are we doing today? Uh, probably like a mid, mid skin fade up to the guy right here. I don't really do on the top, so uh, maybe just scissor down or something like any that. Any product? Do you use no, any product? No, I don't use any product now. Okay, so what about what about with the beard today? Uh, just square it up, take, take maybe half the length off, and uh, clean up the neck, definitely. All right, so what, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what you said, and I'm gonna kind of put my own little thing on it. I think what we're gonna do with the top is I'm gonna texturize it a little bit. We'll use some sea salt today right. to give it a little feel. We're gonna take down your beard, and I think I see a lot of calic down here. We're gonna work with that. Yeah. I also see the color of the hair. A lot of people don't discuss different colors of um, the hair really does affect when you are fading. So I'm gonna try to work with the color of the hair while we're fading on the sides, and uh, we'll see what we could do with the bottom of the beard today. Yeah, I got that nasty one, so. Thank you. Okay, so today I'm gonna be starting off with my two clip, which I will be disinfecting and cleaning before use. What I'm doing with the two clip is I'm going to be establishing my fade line, my top fade line. which you will see right here. And then we will do the bottom fade line with skin. So, in some of my past videos, I spoke about things don't have to be perfect. I would like to actually get into detail with what I meant by that. So when I'm doing this top fade line, all this from here down is gonna be gone. It's gonna be skin eventually. So I really can leave this choppy if I need to. I'm just trying to get the bulk off right now. As long as I pretty much get a nice clean line around to work with, that's what I wanna accomplish out of my first clip and my first time around the head. As you can see, it's not clean. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now, I'm taking my clip off and I'm establishing my mid fade line. So I'm kind of going a little lower than I'm gonna fade. I'm probably gonna go a millimeter higher than that, but I'm gonna leave myself space. This line doesn't need to be perfect. And when I say perfect, I mean straight, because the whole idea is that you're gonna be going from skin to a small amount of hair to a longer amount of hair and the blend. So that's the whole fade process. It's going to be faded and blended. So there will be no hard lines. Some people feel comfortable with a nice clean line with the T outliner and then going in with a foil and this and that. Now over the years, everybody pretty much gets their own techniques. I personally feel comfortable with doing this because I know I can blend all this out where none of this line work is gonna look the way it is now. And that is with different techniques that you feel comfortable with. And you know, you might disagree with me. You might agree with me. Please comment and let me know what you feel is the best way for you. Back to the Haircut here. I still have the sloppy lines, like I was saying before. I'm actually using the wall half clip. James talked about this before with different settings. This is the 116 or the, the 15 mil. Uh, it depends on how you look at it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go open and I'm just gonna establish a little more of a blend. Now, it's not going really to get rid of any of these lines. I just want more area to, to structure lines where I will feel comfortable taking those lines out. I notice it's not really doing anything. I'm, I'm lowering down a little bit to more of a half setting on my clipper itself. Now, it looks like I'm going straight up, but I'm not. If you look at the clip itself, there's a curve. 
So if you go flat against the head, you're not gonna touch anything. If you go flat and you push in, that's the surface that's actually cutting. But when I cut, I'm pulling off. I'm using, using the curvature of his head to actually get that fade out. And I'm going back and forth with the sizing while I'm doing this. What we got now is a little more of a blend. Like I was saying, you could slowly start to see the blend. If you look, the hair is still darker from here to here, and then down bottom is the triple zero, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm slowly getting rid of this line, okay? That's the fade. So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna take my clip off and <laughs> we're gonna slowly start from where I started to begin with with my bottom line, which was the triple zero, okay? So that is the wall, it is all the way up. I started that line, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up ever so slightly from where it was before and I'm kinda gonna scrape. As soon as I hit that line, I'm scraping and I'm slowly opening it up more. See the distance? Open and close, open and close. So now, if I go open and I go higher, it's not necessarily gonna cut anything up here because what happens was, it's triple zero down here, you got about a half here, a one, to a two up top. So I'm just going back over and I'm slowly getting rid of that bottom line again. <laughs> Some people will have a technique that will do this faster. I feel comfortable with the speed that it takes me where I'm giving a quality haircut when we're done and I'm also in a timely fashion for my clients to come in and I make the money that I need to make. A lot of people, they say, you know, uh, certain ways of doing your business, you know, get in there, get the client out, you know, it's about time, uh, time is money. You have to see what works for you. So, I mean, I realize that I personally can cut a certain amount, not now, because we're videotaping, so it's probably gonna be more than a half an hour, because I like to talk. But, a cut like this normally, just a fade, to me, should be normally a half an hour. I could probably bang it out in less, okay? Where it would still be very presentable, but I like to have it half an hour. I like to talk to my client, even though my client's not talking right now. Oh yeah, you're, uh, you're doing talking for both of us. There you go. Good job, But, Mike. but Really in the work. long run, <laughs> it, it, there's a thin line. So one thing I would like to discuss is for the barbers out there. I want to know roughly how long a fade like this should take you. I pretty much, my appointments are half hour appointments just for the fade. Whether it takes me that time or not, my customer has a half an hour. Let me know how long you would take on this fade where you would let that leave your business with your name on it. Back nice. to the hair, back to the hair. Like we were talking earlier, I take steps back and I like to look and see what I'm seeing from a distance mm. with my eyes, but then I also, if James can pan in, mm -hmm. I like to see what's happening in the mirror, okay? So I kind of still see a little line and heavy weight line right there, which I need to work on. I'm not talking about up here because that's all gonna be sheared and blended in. Now, we were talking earlier, me and James, and James talked about in his video about the salt and pepper and this and that. If he could kind of come around, I'm gonna spin the chair. Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but what I was seeing which, with the color of his hair, okay, it gets very light. Now there's still, this is triple zero. This is not even skin yet. Okay, so hmm. right here, you still see little black and darker specks of hair, which really does make it hard to fade. Even though you put on one clip and you go straight up, it's still gonna be blotchy. So that's where the fading comes into play, where you need to finesse that with your techniques to get that out. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna be finessing all that bottom line. Right now I'm back to the wall, um, 116th or however you want to say it. 
I'm still working on that bottom line. And then I'm gonna show you how I feel comfortable hitting that bottom area with the skin. Now personally, some people do a hard line, like I was saying earlier. That's hard for me to get rid of that line because you have a hard line from skin to hair and then there's more technique of pulling off and trying to get rid of that. I personally like to do a clean fade as low as I could get it down here when I'm doing skin and then skin it off later so I could do more of a pull off and slowly finesse the skin up. You could still see the lightness down here and the darkness up top. I'm happy with this area right here. Now, like I said before, I don't really want to establish a crazy hard line because it's hard for me to get off. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna tap into that and pull off. Now, I also see I was sloppy earlier, so some of you might comment that I didn't get this hair down here, but I don't care about that because I'm gonna go back once I pull this off. So you might start to see a line, but it's not a drastic hard line. I'm not stopping. I'm, I'm seriously pulling off, and then I will be able to just pull off with my liner. Sometimes I'll stretch the skin to actually get in there with the foil. So it will pull the hair out a little bit. This is a fantastic, fantastic product, okay? The uh, Babless Pro. It's almost like seriously to skin, but I mean, it's, it's, it's almost as close as you would be with the razor blade itself. I'm still working on this area. I still have a little bit more to go down here with, with the fade, okay? I cleaned up a little bit more around the ears. Me and James were talking, and they're gonna wanna go with more of an angled, faded line in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a hard line. I'm using the top of the ear to play around. Now, nothing is symmetrical. I'm gonna have to actually use some of my eyesight to see if it's symmetrical. But like I said before, it doesn't have to be too clean of a line because we're gonna fade it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to clean up this bottom area here with the foil, and then I will blend all this. So I personally sometimes go back and forth. Either I'll do a taper here and a taper here and then I'll connect, or I kinda just go with the person's head and see what looks best for them with their shape. So now, we're going back in. I'm pretty happy with my bottom fade line, my middle fade line. Uh, I'm gonna start tackling the top. He said he really doesn't put product in. No, I don't. So, oh, he speaks. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. Um, so, and I'm not, this is my friend, and this is a closed shop. Yeah. I'm not being mean to my customers. They like when I'm mean to them. So. He doesn't really put product in, nope. but we're going to be using that sea salt spray today to show him what product can do. Okay. So what I plan on doing is I plan on getting rid of that top line and I'm going to texturize a little bit of the top and we're going to take a little bit off. Done. Right. After I disinfect my five, I'm going to show you what I'm using. It's a five clip. Now it's, it's hitting that top line a little bit. I am going over the crown, but not totally. Right here, if James wants to show you, it's a little light, we're not gonna lie. Okay, we're gonna work with that. This whole area down here, I'm gonna cut that in half, and I'm gonna work with this bottom area of the crown. James is gonna get out of my way so I could grab another clip. Oh, okay, now, <laughs> hey now. Now who's, now who's yelling at the cameraman? Yeah, I'm the cameraman, everybody, relax. Yeah, hi, how you doing? Now I'm gonna hit my trusty four clip. So we just finished the fade. I'm tackling the top line with my five clip and then I drop down to my four clip. I'm okay with the way the fade is coming out, uh, or came out. 
I'm going to be using my Hattori Hanzos to blend that area a little bit more. And you know, what, what this kind of does is it gives that, that texturizing cut to any of the lines or the weight that I need to get off. I'm going to be going all the way around this area here. So it's like another fade area. See where I kind of went like that? That whole fade area I'm going to be texturizing. Then I'm going to be going in with the Hattori Hanzo um, bigger shears, which is more of like a point cut like James talked about in his last video. Okay, so now I'm switching over to my other Hattori Hanzos. What I spoke about earlier is the big gap in these compared to the thinner gap in the other ones. What this actually does is, like I said, it, it, it's like a point cut. James spoke about it in his last um, video. I really like this because, it, like I said, with the barbering, it will cut down on your time. You're not really sitting there sectioning and doing things. I really personally like this, where I go across and that point cuts enough and texturizes enough where I'm happy with it. Now, I also said with the color of his hair, it plays tricks on you. James spoke about this with the um, salt and pepper as well. They're really becomes a point where you got to say, okay, I'm done with the fade. You have to walk away. If you continue hitting it, you're going to do damage to the fade and you're going to pretty much have to start over. So I'm happy with what I did with my fade. Now I'm texturizing the top. I'm working with that and we're going to finish that. Okay. So now I got my three clip. We're going to start to tackle the beard. He said about half. I'm going to go through the whole thing with three clip and then I'm going to slowly blend all this like I said before. And what's happening too is now that I'm taking it down, I'm seeing how crazy these calyx really are going to be for me to tackle. Raise that up to the very of that calic and work with it that way which the customer agrees mm -hmm. yeah he speaks again i got crazy calyx <laughs> cowlick calic cowlick cow why, why you have such a hard time yeah, saying why that? you keep saying cowlick say cow cow lick lick, lick. cow lick calic it's like a cow licked you that cow licked me really hard to find uh, quality clients for videos. I hate this place. <laughs> now, we're gonna be blending this beard in. I started up here with my triple zero. I blended slightly with my liner. Now I'm gonna be using my Andis one clip. The whole beard is down to a three over here. I line up this area here as my guideline. I use the bottom of the ear and I kind of angle up to the nostril. That's as far down as I want to go. This area right here. One more thing. We are using an Andis clip on a wall senior. I like these clips a lot because of the magnetic uh, feature on them. They do slide, they don't perfectly fit, but we push it forward and it rarely moves. We can really feel it if it moves um, and I really don't have a problem with it at any time. And it just, you could see that it stays in place here. Now we're gonna be tackling this neckline. You could kind of see right here where his line is, but I'm looking at where the calic is. I'm trying to get rid of that problem. He's okay with me pushing it up a little higher. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the top of that and I'm just gonna chop into that and I'm gonna create a new line. Now I have to be really sensitive with the way I'm going over this because these are all spinning around and that could potentially pull.
Now, as you see, I'm also flipping this upside down so it's not gonna pull and grab in certain areas. So I say something when it pulls? Uh, you scream very loudly. So we're gonna be finishing up right now. Like I said, he has a lot of those swirls and everything. I'm bringing it above the problem area. He's okay with the line where it is. Now, I wanna say something about one of my videos uh, recently. He has the same issue. So the hair is growing this way, it's growing this way, this is coming up that way. It might play tricks on you, just like the color of the hair sometimes plays tricks on you. The, the growth of the hair will play tricks on you. So you gotta find where it looks good when he's laying down, but then you also have to see when he's standing up, how it looks or whatever the situation is. He doesn't walk like this. But when he's up top and I shave this down, as long as it's symmetrical to his face, that's a proper line. So we're just gonna finish up this line work now. I'm gonna clean off the bottom here with the pro foil because like we said, it's a very sensitive area due to the swirls and the different growth of the hair. So I'm gonna hit this with the pro foil and then we'll come back to this after that. going very, very lightly. Because this is the irritation point. Now we got the hot towel. I already took down the neckline with the pearl foil because of his sensitivity. We're gonna put the towel on to help those pores down there, as well as soften the hair up top for me to straight razor shave. Is that too hot? Oh, uh, you're perfect, thank you. Good. So now I'm just gonna put a little shaving gel up top here, rub that in. We're gonna leave that natural. Now, when I spoke in other videos about leaving natural, sometimes I still line it, but tap the line. Uh, this time we're not going to do anything. I'm just going to catch a line right here for him. Up top. So I'm, I'm looking here, I'm seeing how the light spot is and where I want to put the line. Kind of lining it up with the lip. Now even though there's no hair there, I'm still pretending that there is. Because that's where I want the line to be. Now I'm going to follow through, same thing on the other side. I'm always covering this area just in case. And also stretching the skin while I'm doing that. And right now I'm looking for the same thing, the light area. I'll take a step back. I'm going to look at my lines. I'm going to have him actually slide. Perfect, right there. Look up a little bit, that way, right there. So I'm double checking my lines from a distance. I'm gonna clean this up, and then I'm gonna lift him up and see what it looks like straight on. So Mike, what, what are we gonna be doing with your eyebrows uh, today? I need two of them. Two eyebrows? Yeah, I like that unibrow thing going on right here. Okay, if you so can clean it up and get the, some of the uh, wild hairs down, that'd be great. Perfect, perfect. So I'm just going to be cleaning up some of this real quick. I'm going to take down the length and then I'm going to hit it with a razor for him a little bit. I find the, the Andis one clip all the way open or a little closed is usually where I want to be. And I, and I don't really go in hard, I just kind of tap at it. Sometimes I'll, I'll use the um, liner with the comb as well. I go back and forth with techniques. Just putting a little gel. Now right now, I mean, we're not gonna go too drastic. I'm kind of looking at the length of the hair here is a little more than here and here. So I'm just gonna stretch and get rid of those little peach fuzz areas. And give it a nice shape. 
I'm gonna go in the middle here. Let me get rid of all those little fuzzies. So we have the tea tree sea salt spray right now. He doesn't really use product, but I want to introduce him to something different. Right now, this is like um, kind of gonna give you that next day feel after you go to the the shore or whatever, and it's like that after you've been swimming in the ocean feel. Just to give a little texture. And I'm just gonna shake that around, not make it too perfect at all. So now we're gonna be putting in the Temple Smoke Styling Balm. It also smells very good. How's it smell? It smells really good. And we're just gonna be using a little bit of that on his beard for him. Like I said, he's not really into too much product, but I'm trying to introduce him into something different as well. This is not very aggressive, so I feel this is oh, a great very, product super. for him, and hopefully he will look more into it. So, <laughs> we're finished with your haircut and your shave today. We yeah. tried some new products. How do you feel? How do you look? I mean, it's like night and day, really. I mean, I, I, I love the lines, I love how it, how the, how the hair is looking. It's, it's a great haircut, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, man. Another great one from the Dapper Den. How's it going guys? It's Jared Gilbert from the Dapper Den, Ridgefield, Connecticut again. And today we have one of my employees, TJ. So on the comment section, I've noticed that some of you guys are asking for us to cut each other. Um, hopefully not literally, but uh, haircut wise. So today we have um, the shop apprentice, TJ. He's been with us for a couple months now, and he's gonna get tortured by me. Yeah. The last time we cut his hair, we pretty much did a, I believe it was like a number two. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Like real, it. real you low fade. <laughs> uh, maybe about a, um, a one mid fade to a two. Somewhat of an undercut on each side, and then blended it a little bit on the top. Yeah back area here by the crown um the reason why we're doing that was his hair was very short and he eventually wants to grow out a full undercut but we're kind of doing an in-between type of cut so it doesn't look crazy and this is a good uh way of pretty much slowly changing into a different hairstyle from what you're used to we're also going to be shaping up that beard of his and we'll get started with my wall senior my two clip disinfected I'm gonna take my comb out of my barber side why can't they acknowledge that it's disinfected was it infected before apprentice <laughs> apprentice you tell me no, no, no. why I acknowledge Cut that, that because we're cleanly you would like to keep cleanly while cutting before and after cutting and we don't want any bad bruises. okay thank you <laughs> TJ already has somewhat of an undercut that I started last time. I'm gonna go back into that with the two clip here where it's gonna be drastic on the sides. And like I said, I kind of do have separation back here, but then I kind of chop into it. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. Okay, the camera's not following me, so I'll just follow the camera. So this is the undercut line that I'm establishing. Now I'm going back here so it doesn't look crazy. You kind of see like this area right here was left a little bit longer last time. Um, I could potentially, uh, you know, fully undercut this, but it's gonna look like a bolt. So what I think I'm gonna do for now 
I'm gonna hit this two area back here lightly, and then I'm gonna texturize into the top until that grows in. Pretty much what I'm doing is I'm probably gonna fade down and then fade back up. So I'm starting with my two clip. I established my top fade line, which is actually my undercut line. If you can see in this area, we left that choppy because I don't want to really do a drastic line. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is cutting my fade line with a one. Now, like I've said in the past and everybody jokes around, this does not have to be perfect, meaning that I'm going back into this um, to make it better once I fade it out. So right now, I like to clear off as much hair as I can for my levels to be where they need to be. And I could go back in and see what I have to do. Some people go perfectly around. Everybody cuts differently. In this situation, I like to use um, a brush over a comb just because of my history i learned that you know it just helps it lay down better okay so like i said this doesn't have to be perfect i'm staying here with the temple i'm going around now i went from closed to open because this is a little less than my two clip that I started with. Now I'm going in different directions to catch all those hairs. His hair texture is a little thicker and curlier. So I'm using different techniques to make that work for me. Okay, so now I'm jumping over and obviously, like I said, I like to go back and forth to my Babelish Pro liner, which I'm gonna start another fade line, which will be my back temple. Excuse me, let's try that one more time. My back taper line, and we're gonna do a temple line. So what I'm technically doing here, by the time I'm done, he's gonna have a skin taper to a one to a two. Now I'm gonna go back in with my wall senior and I'm hitting that two, that one to two right here. So I'm going from closed on the one speedo guide to open. That's gonna give me more of my fade right here around the temple. So what I'm doing right here with the seeing off is I'm, I'm, I'm hitting his head, I'm hitting the line and then I'm pulling off. So it might look like I'm bringing it up high, but I'm not. Now this is the part that I steal TJ's clipper because mine is dying. <laughs> well, mine sounds so much better. Too. I know, right? It's so much newer, kid. This is the magic clip by Wall. The reason why we use this a lot compared to the other Wall clipper is that. <laughs> This one is a regular tooth. This one has a jagged tooth in there. So what happens is it kind of doesn't cut things perfectly like a scissor. It, it, it cuts it like jagged and angled, more of a texturizing uh, when you're doing the fade. So it's really a thousand times easier to fade out those, uh, those lines with this compared to um, just using something with a uh, regular tooth. I do find using this sometimes that if you go down and you zero gap it, it does pull on the skin a little bit. So I'm always, you know, not closed completely. I'll kick it open a notch so it doesn't hurt the client. So this is kind of, I don't know what we were going for the last time. I kept saying, Peaky blinders. Everybody keeps using the word peaky blinders. Um, like skin fade undercut. Yeah, it's a skin fade undercut. I mean, however you want to look at it. I mean, it's very popular right now. Um, I truthfully just found out what peaky blinders was last year. But um, pretty cool cuts. 
great hats. So now I'm going back in with a different one clip all the way open, which is a little less than the other ones that I was using. Um, I like to go back and forth between manufacturers. Each one has a different setting and level, so it helps me fade out what I need to fade out. Um, I don't know, I never really found uh, clips that go up in the numbers to work. Maybe it's my technique that's not working properly, but um, I mean, walls clips do work very well, obviously with the walls. Um, when I was using Andis, I feel these clips were better on the Andis um, than even the magnetic ones. Um, the magnetic one has a lot of play. The downfall with these generic clips is they're metal here and it gets worn out and the teeth break very easily. So you go through these puppies real quick. So I'm gonna pretty much just take a couple step back steps to see what it looks like from a distance if there's some heavy spots now we're gonna be using the pro foil just hitting this bottom area here clean up all that now I'm really just tapping pulling off do a little circular motion to get some of those hairs off Now I'm gonna switch over to this babless. And instead of scraping, I'm gonna go flush on his hair and his skin. And kind of just scrape off and see off with this one. This one I have zero gap, so it should be a little tighter. Um, like I was saying before, sometimes when I zero gap things, I do notice that it pulls on the skin. We don't want that. So I've been noticing that I've used these for different techniques. Um, and it tends to work better for myself and my client where he's not irritated uh, with the haircut. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So hopefully you guys will be seeing a little more of TJ coming up on uh, some Beard Baron videos. He's been with us uh, four months. Two, two long, two long, uh, yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Four months. Excellent. He's actually uh, the third ever barber apprentice in the state of Connecticut which I'm running the uh, program with the state. So hopefully you got some good, cool things from uh, a, pro a professional apprentice and hopefully a professional um, master barber down the line to see what he has to offer to haircutting and the uh, product community. That's enough about him, back to me. We coming? Okay, so today um, I'm gonna switch over to the shark fins. What I was talking about before, why I'm switching back from uh, different manufacturers, these are really close um, compared to my other ones. So it's just gonna clean up a little bit and texturize all these little hairs. Um, people might be like, it's pointless. I personally like it. Um, also, this area here that we were gonna leave a little heavier so it doesn't just look like a straight up uh, bowl cut, I'm gonna texturize into that with the shark cut. So like I said, he's going to be growing this out now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna chop a little bit of the dead end. Dead! The zinc. The zinc, kid! The uh, dead ends off and the Zohan's off. The Zohan, kid. We're gonna make this silky smooth. Uh, we're gonna cut some of these dead ends off. And like I said, with, with, with the really tight teeth on the shark fin, I'm just chopping through a little bit. It's really not taking off as much as my other shears would. So it's just adding that little bit of texture that I really want. Right back here, you see how I kind of like blended this as a fade, but then I'm kind of fading right here, but then there's a hard line. There's a reason for that. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm necessarily starting my own style, but it will look good in the grow out. And that's the thing. 
we, we see a lot of people come in and they want a haircut, but it's not ready. And, and you know, you could just take this and bowl cut anybody's head and ask for the money, but you, your name is on the product. You kind of want to come with a happy uh, medium in there. Ending. The happy ending. You want to get a happy ending out of this. You think they'll leave that? I don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> right, here you go. Now I'm just gonna lightly go around his ears here, clean up any of those little hairs that I did not fade and taper out. I somewhat give a nice little line around here because of my taper and I'll lead into there down bottom. So I'm pretty much cleaning around the front taper to the back taper. So now what I'm doing, this is a Remington, all different companies make this. My little cheater, it's just really small profile that I could get in over here around the ears. Um, and that helps me with a good line, especially when we were talking about he has irritation with a razor maybe, or whatever the situation is with his skin. So I wanna try to not irritate it any more than I have. So now what I'm doing is I'm just blending this area in here a little bit. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be straightening his beard a little bit, trimming around the edges, and we're just going to line it up a little bit. Now, what are we thinking with your beard? What would you like to keep up? What would you like to leave natural? First time I've grown it this long. Mm -hmm. What I'm noticing right now is about six months coming in. Okay. It's starting to go this way. Right. I want it to just grow thick, long down, but I don't know if I can do that. Right. So I don't know. I want to clean this up because it hits the ear. Right. That's a bother in the ear area. So what we're going to do is let's straighten it. As far as this, I'm not sure what to do Let's with straighten it. it. I'll clean up the bottom and the side and then we'll take it from there and see where you need to be. Oh, I'm like burning your face off. But I will tell you that I throw some beer brand in here and the comb goes right through. Yep. So nice. It's a good like condition conditioner as well. Softens my hair up. I mean, now that you've been working here, obviously you're using the beer brand, but fantastic product. Looks like the old it feels more comfortable on my face to have mine straightened than all like curled and plump. Oh, see, that feels so much easier to do. And that's where the, 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 the grooming comes into play as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna tap in, tap in. I'm tapping and I'm pulling toward the ear. I'm tapping and I'm pulling toward the ear. I'm tapping and I'm pulling toward the ear. Now, that kind of just squared off this whole back end. I'm not going any more in than his jawline that's his natural line because as soon as i go up his jaw it automatically connects to his uh upper ear now what are you doing with your mustache are you going to be leaving the lip line george um, trimmed it for me the other day yes so, yeah we're going to keep trimming that keep trimming i think his girlfriend is looking at me right now she wants yeah yeah she, she wants to clean yeah. around the lip line yeah. i know a lot of females they get irritated yeah. you can have the craziest beard just clean your you know lip who line. likes the beard brand more than me your girl yeah. there you go if you're a man and you want to talk to your wife or your girlfriend you can kind of recommend beard brand for a nice holiday gift or you could come to the dapper den and you could buy it here thank you dr phil dr <laughs> phil kid <laughs> this guy's my employee in a month oh my god i think it got my eye <laughs> <laughs> Yo. cut what are you doing you know that's the worst thing to do because dude my clients do just do it. it's weird when they're like I'm like, what are you doing, dude? You're, you're <laughs> yeah. disorienting your lip, yeah. and then you come out with like one thin side, <laughs> yeah. one curved off side, and you like dude, that dude, happened to me today. Just, just stay natural. All just right. like, don't blow kisses. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, close yeah. your mouth, though. I don't need to see what's in there. Close your no, close your mouth. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my shark fins. He is growing it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thin down these corners. You sound like you're introducing yourself to like a song. 
And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have TJ. So I'm coming on a, an angle and I'm just getting the dead, dead ends off as well, bending the shears, using the shark thin uh, bending shears. So I'm just going a little bit underneath the jawline here. Um, I see the irritation as well down here. So we're gonna work around that. Now we're just gonna be doing a little bit of the uh, shaving gel. I don't know what accent that was. <laughs> the French sh shaving gel. So I'm stretching the skin, giving TJ a little bit of a line here because it's a little light in that area. Oh my God. Take a light after me. Now the positive feature about TJ's hair texture is it is very um, coarse, but then when it softens up, it is very soft. Um, that's due to the hot towel and also using the proper uh, shaving gel. TJ was actually a shop client before he worked here. Um, so I try to give him the same amount of treatment I did when he was paying. Doesn't always work out that way, does it? Do I get reimbursed for that? Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is pretty much called a dry shave. It's the same thing I just did, but there's really no uh, shaving gel or cream on there. So you can really see the line work. Some people you'll you'll go on Instagram and they'll they'll say like uh, ash line or other other terms of this. Pretty much what it's doing is it's scraping off the first layer of the dead skin and giving it a nice line around the beard where you could really see where you shaved. Now you don't want to do it too much because obviously it, it will be irritating, but I really like to do it because it gives a really sharp line. So obviously TJ is a fan of the temple smoke because it was at his station. Um, you obviously know the smell. The thing that I like about this, A, it smells amazing. You really don't have to use too much. I'm gonna use a chunk on here because we're gonna use this on the hair and the beard. Which is every morning, which is great. Now I'm just gonna rub it in my hands, warm it up, mess this in his hair nicely. So I'm pretty much going through his whole head, making sure it's all in there. Whatever's left over, I could use in my beard. So how are we feeling? Good. Coming to work on time tomorrow? I feel dapper. You feel dapper? I feel dapper, Dad. Thank you, guys.